welcome back to the podcast. In today's episode, I'm just going to do a solo episode talking about how the book tour went and also answer some of your questions. I put a post on Instagram asking for your questions after a lot of you read the book. And so I have your list of questions. I will be reading them and answering them for you. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> I just got back from Mexico. And before that, I went to Hawaii. I just needed a big break after the book tour. It was very, very intense. It was the busiest I've ever been in my entire life. I went to New York for the book release on January 23rd. And as soon as I got there, things were hectic and I just went from place to place to place, from morning show to other morning show, just media, like one after another, after another, after another. And it was exciting, it was fun, but it was also very exhausting. I really appreciate the people that came out. And as I was going in some of the studios, there were people there like waiting to take pictures or wanting me to sign something. And I thought that was really sweet. So thank you for coming out. Yeah, the the press, they were a lot nicer to me this time around. In the past, they'd been not so nice. I still got some tough questions, but I was ready for it this time. Yeah, I think just telling the truth is very helpful. I think the book really tells a story in the way I want it to be told. I'm getting so much positive feedback. This time, when the media would ask me certain questions that were uncomfortable, um, like I was ready, like I was totally ready for it. And I was, I felt really good and I felt confident in, um, in these interviews. And I'm, I'm happy that I went to New York that first week because the book ended up becoming a bestseller. It was a New York times instant bestseller the week it came out. That to me means that the book really resonated with people. And I appreciate that. And it's the book, you know, I wish I had when I was younger. It's a book about self-love and self-worth and respecting yourself and coming into your own power, your own value. And I think it's, it's, it's helping. And the, the book has helped me find my voice and the book tour has helped me find even more of a voice. After New York, I came back to Los Angeles. And from there, I had a big book signing at Barnes & Noble. A lot of people showed up. I was afraid, honestly. I was on the Barnes & Noble website and I could see where the people could buy tickets. I'm like, oh, is anyone going to show up? Like how many tickets were bought? And I was nervous that maybe people weren't going to show up, but they did. And I had such a big turnout. So many friends and family came. There was a huge line of people with their books that they bought and uh, ready to have them signed. And I try to spend as much time as I could with everybody. And I just feel honored that people read it and they're also listening to the audiobook. The audiobook's doing really well. And a lot of people have been messaging me on social media, telling me that the books helped them with their different relationships and um, getting out of hard things. And so I really appreciate that. It's been, it's been like a, a true whirlwind. And after Los Angeles, I went over to the UK to promote the book over there with uh, Penguin. UK was a lot of fun. I have family there, so I got to see my family. I also had a speaking engagement where I talked about the book with Pandora Sykes in front of a hundred people. And I'm pretty introverted, so it was a little tough, but I got through it. And I do feel more confident with doing the book tour that, you know, I can get through things. I can do things. I'm finding my voice. And I just, I just feel really happy about that. And if I can find my voice, someone who was very like weak and timid and didn't even know who I was. And I, I think anyone can. And so I just, the response to the book has been completely overwhelming in the most positive way. People are so supportive like 99.999999% of everyone is just so supportive and I'm just following the light. You know, of course, a few people have some negative things, but I just, I just ignore that. So, and keep going and, and keep trying to make a positive impact with the book. So thank you for ordering. Thank you for pre-ordering. Thank you for reading. Thank you for 
downloading the audiobook. And I just appreciate it so much. And I look forward to continuing this podcast, finding my voice here. And it's been a lot of fun. And I like when I talk to people and they reference the podcast and, you know, everything's a work in progress, finding your voice and finding yourself. And I think I'm well on my way and I'm happy for those of you who are on your way as well. And so thank you again. And then from here, I want to answer some questions. People wanted the real tea on some things in the book that they have questions about it from the book, from, you know, related to the mansion, related to other people in the story. So I will dive right into that right now. Okay. I have questions from people and I'm just going to tell you the, the truth, my truth, how I feel, how it is. And that's it. Dam.gina asks, uh, oh, not a question to the book, but was Mary as nice as they make her seem in the show? I think Mary is a sensitive topic because other girls from the mansion speak so highly of Mary. For me, it was hard to be around Mary. Mary got really caught up in a lot of the drama. She was just very like crass and over opinionated and kind of pushy. And it was hard. It was hard for me. Like her personality was a bit hard for me. And it was, you know, she was there and she's someone I had to get along with. And I tried my best, but the person who later replaced Mary, her name is Amanda. She's Jennifer in my book. Her and I got along really, really well. I appreciated Amanda's boundaries and you know, she didn't take work home with her and I respected her and appreciated her for that. Oh, it's an amazing, such a great read. Thank you so much, Fanny. You're a beautiful person. Thank you. Uh, Darbs for Life says, did you end up getting any money in the end or did the prenup stand? And a lot of people have been asking me about money stuff and I did have a prenup with Hef and people have asked me like, oh, why didn't you negotiate for more? Why didn't you, like, why did you just sign what was given to you? And I didn't really know that I had the negotiating power or option. Like I just, I didn't have the tools then. So I just signed whatever was handed to me. And when the first attorney wouldn't sign it, I just sent it to a different attorney. And a lot of the money that I made was while I was in the mansion, you know, I did a lot of social media ads and I bought a house in secret. When I lived there, I started investing in like crypto stuff. I started uh, DJing. I just did what I could to save money so that, you know, I, I wouldn't be like financially abused by half anymore and wouldn't have to like literally hold my hand out and beg for money. So I worked really hard to be financially secure and uh, financially free. Shanaz Reads asks me, what did Bridget M do specifically to make you publicly criticize her? I guess I, I didn't mean to like publicly criticize anybody. It's just that whole situation was a public thing. So I, I was being asked and I was just answered what I was being asked. And more recently, Holly, Bridget and I were asked to do a show called After the Mansion. And I remember telling the producer, like, I don't know if Holly likes me. I don't know if we can do this show together. And he said, oh, I wouldn't worry about Holly. Like, I would worry about the other one. And like, oh, like, what have I ever done to her? Like, I don't even know her. Um, I also heard that she watched the sizzle reel that we had done and said, oh, Crystal looks young. I'm not sure what that means. Um, but she told a mutual friend of ours that. Uh, and then also... Uh, Bridget feels that I didn't let her come to the mansion toward the end of Hef's life. You know, I was Hef's wife. I, at that time, I think Bridget doesn't understand, like I was actually married to him. And so there, there weren't lots of girlfriends around. We were married. I think she doesn't understand that Hef didn't really bring her up, didn't mention her name. If she was someone that Hef said, oh, I really want this person here, 
then she would be there. But it's, she's not somebody that he ever brought up. And I'm just being completely honest. I don't know her. I don't, you know, she, he would talk about different girlfriends and people he really cared about. He talked about, you know, Sandy, Brandy and Mandy. And he said when I was there with the twins that it kind of reminded him of that. And he talked about other people in very fond ways, but it just, she just wasn't somebody that he mentioned to me at all. And my personal experience with Bridget was when we were filming the se uh, season six of The Girls Next Door, which I didn't ask to be on. I was told that I was filming it. I didn't get paid any money. And Bridget and Holly, they were paid to film some scenes with us. Holly was pleasant enough. She was cordial with me. And Bridget just wouldn't even speak to me unless the camera was on. So take take with that what you want like she just didn't even speak to me unless the camera was on and that's just the truth it's just the truth i don't know much about her at all i don't know why the th those two don't like me very much it's hard for me because you know they do have a podcast where they reminisce about their times in the mansion and things they like different parties or outfits or things that they did that they really enjoyed and when I look back, like I didn't enjoy anything. Like there's nothing that I can think of that I really enjoyed. I didn't like the parties. I didn't like dressing up in those outfits. I didn't like any of it. I didn't like any of it. There's nothing. Like I do admire the fact that they have something that they can hang on to that's positive. I don't have that. Like there's nothing positive there for me at all. I hope that answers that question. I hope that we can all get along. I don't have anything against any of the girls. We women were <laughs> definitely all women now. You know, I'm I'm the youngest at 37. So um, I hope we can all get along. Chopsticks, Trav, nothing but love for you, Chris. Thank you. Uh, Trake Young says, what would you tell Hefner in seven words if you see him again? I have no idea. <laughs> What would it be? Let's see. You hurt people more than you realize you did. That's nine. <laughs> there you go. Miss Muerte127 asks, did you show Hef affection, quote, affection throughout your relationship? Was it depiction on Girls Next Door accurate? So on Girls Next Door, when we were filming, Hef would say, you know, be more affectionate toward me. He would always say that. So that wasn't accurate on there. That's all I'm saying about that. Circa Obscura, do you feel like you owe any of Hef's former girlfriends apologies now that you've grown? I think that's a great question because when we were all at the mansion, it was very dog eat dog. Everyone's in it for themselves. Like you could be replaced at any second. So yeah, everyone was mean to each other and it, it was survival there. It really was. So there are girls that, yeah, I, I am sorry that if I treated them in any uh, way that was not positive, it, it was hard. It was hard there. And I know a lot of people talk about like, oh, who were the mean girls? Who were the nice girls? Who were, you know, at, at one point we were all just trying to survive. So I'm sorry for anyone uh, whose feelings that I hurt. Did you save your wedding dress. You said you trashed all your bunny era clothes from JMR444477. I sold the wedding dress and donated the money to leukemia and lymphoma because that's what Hef's uh, secretary had at the time. And so I wanted to donate all the money to a charity. And that's where we donated it to. I create EYE. Why did you marry him if life was so bad in the Playboy lifestyle? Why wait so long? You know, I've been trying to think of this myself. You know, when I was at the mansion, this was before Me Too. This was before we knew, like, what a narcissist was. This was, you know, when all the misogyny and all that stuff was more normalized. And so I don't know. Maybe that's part of it. Maybe because the media praised this man so much. And I just kept thinking, like, oh, something's wrong with me. And I just need to stick it out and... Yeah, and when people are in abusive relationships, I don't think it's that easy to leave. You kind of blame yourself and think it's your fault and try and do better. So that's what happened.
Ryan Jackson, drums. Congrats on the book. I heard you went to La Jolla High School. I did too. Do you ever make it back to La Jolla? And my life was really hard in San Diego. You know, I had nothing and felt like I was nobody and it was hard and bad relationships and a relationship where, you know, my boyfriend passed away. So going to San Diego just gives me bad memories, unfortunately. Molly A. Keeker. How are you doing with the signings and interviews? I think I'd be drained. It was so exhausting. It was truly exhausting. But I, I'm so thrilled that we made the bestseller list. I'm so happy that the story is resonating with people. I was so tired that after the UK, my publicist, he's like, okay, when are we going to start doing all the Australia press? I'm like, oh, I need a break. I'm going to Hawaii and I just, I just need a break. I'm very introverted. So it gets very hard for me. And especially when I'm telling the same story and kind of, it's like a different version of the same story with every interview. So it does get exhausting. And then you're reliving all this trauma and questioning yourself. And yeah, it was, it was rough. <laughs> Andrew Sanilovich. I hope you know how much fans love and support you. So proud of you. Thank you. So sweet. Put a little bunch of little hearts. Uh, Mama, yeah, 33. Are you still playing a part at the Playboy Foundation regardless of the book? Yes, I am still the president of the board of the Hugh Hefner Foundation. And there's an auction coming up with Julian's Auctions shortly. If you Google Julian's Auctions and Hugh Hefner, they're going to be auctioning with... Marilyn Monroe things and also Playboy things. A lot of art from the Playboy Mansion. So yeah, we're just raising money for the foundation and I hope to donate some of the money to women's causes. Yeah, I'll just see how that plays out and see how that goes. And for now, I just am glad I was able to tell my truth. Sandra D Beauty 01. Before I have passed, did you think every did you ever think about telling him about how you truly felt? Or did you? Before Hef passed, I, you know, I had gotten my implants removed. I had stopped dyeing my hair. It was pretty much brown at that point. And yeah, I was starting to become, to become like my actual self. And he loved and respected me, with, I hope, a little bit more. So I think he hopefully learned a little bit of lessons, a few lessons before he passed. But I don't know. I never wanted to really burst his bubble. But if he were around today, I would definitely have some choice words for him. I read the book, Goldie Bear, 1976. The sad part is you want to believe that people with power are going to be nice. Yeah, uh, you'd like to believe that. And Hef was really nice. You know, he was magnetic and that's what drew me in, for sure. Melrose Fletch, I saw your book in the bookstore today. So exciting. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's so cool. I love it when people send me pictures of the books in the bookstore. And I've been going to bookstores and just signing them. I've been trying to just go and sign them. Zinc underscore Lauren. Are your stepkids okay that you wrote the book? Um, I let Hef's older kid know that, you know, I wrote the book. I, you know, I'm sorry for if it upset you, but I just wanted to tell the truth. And I told the same to Marston. I don't really talk to Cooper or Christy much anymore. Uh, Drea Ferrez, you had me in tears. Great book. Thank you so much. Um, Kayla Z. McHorter. Thank you for sharing your story. Congratulations on your growth. Have you ever seen Hef drunk? I have never seen Hef drunk. He would get a uh, Jack Daniels and Pepsi. And so they would have the Pepsi and the Jack Daniels. And he the drink would still be full pretty much by the end of the night. Like it would still be full. So when he got more sick and he had to be on a lot more medication, I would tell them like just barely like flick the alcohol on the top. That way like he still has a smell and still thinks there's alcohol. but but. It'd be, you know, it'd be better off for him. But uh, let's see, JS now 83. Are you dating Vinny from Jersey Shore? Y'all would make the best couple for your souls. I am not dating Vinny from Jersey Shore. I have never met him. Um, I am dating someone though, and they are very nice and kind and caring. So I really appreciate them. Halian underscore that's me underscore. What do you think of Playboy now? Whew. I think Playboy is going in the right direction. I think now the magazine is truly about freedom and expression. Before, Hef would say, you know, Playboy is about freedom and expression and all those things. But it really 
wasn't that free when it was basically him putting whoever he thought was attractive in the magazine. I don't know. There was nothing like universal about it, I thought. But now I think it's getting better. Have any former girlfriends reached out since your book came out? No, they haven't. Some people spoke to media. I saw that Hef's previous wife, Kimberly, has spoken to some media and she put out a statement defending Hef. But this was also someone that I would see naked, big naked photos of her like all around the mansion. And, you know, her kids would come in there and there's like naked pictures of her on the wall. I never asked have to take them down, but if that's not objectification, then I'm not sure what is. Miss Mayfield Chaplin, can you sign our books in the UK? Yeah, I want to give an address so you can send them in and I can sign them and send them back. And I did sign all of the books at Waterstones in London, like all the Waterstones in London. I signed all those books while I was there. So I will try and get as many books signed as possible. So send me a DM and we'll try and figure it out. Let's see. Somebody's asking me who Amber is in the book. And Amber is one of my best friends to this day. And I just respect her and respect her wishes and the way that she wants to tell her story and when, and if she doesn't want to, that's okay too. Um, she's been going through a lot lately. She's always been such an incredible friend and she's a good person. She has the best heart. Yeah, I just love her. And whenever she wants to talk, then I'll talk with her. But until then, I really respect her privacy. Will you ever talk about your book with Holly and Bridget on their podcast? Yeah, I'm open for whatever. I'm I'm open to talking. Let's see, what's next after the book tour? Yeah, I think I'm just going to chill. Erin7292, have you ever read the book Cultish by Amanda Montel? Would you say the Playboy was cultish? It was definitely cultish, and I need to read that book. So thank you. How long did it take you to write the book? Total, probably about two years. Uh, when it got picked up by the publisher, they wanted it in a year, which usually it's around two years. So we kind of hustled and got it, got it together quickly. I really love the book. There's not much I would change. I think it was written very well and very happy with how it was written. If you didn't love him, why did you marry him? Well, I was there at the mansion and Hef gave me a ring and I just thought, okay, maybe he wants a good PR story at the end of his life. He didn't really ask me to marry him. He just gave me this ring. If I say no, I'm leaving tomorrow. So, and I did think back to when I had real love and true love, and that was my high school sweetheart that was killed in the war. And I just thought, okay, I already had a, a great love, and that was that was my love. And so I'm just here, and if Hef wants to get married, then sure, I'll marry him. That's how it went. I am going to answer one more question before my phone dies. There's so many questions. I'm gonna have to do another, another um, Q and A here soon. Did you watch the Girls Next Door show before you went to the Halloween party and met Hef? The crazy thing is I never had watched the Girls Next Door show. I never watched one episode. I just never thought it was a show I would be into. I heard that Hef had a girlfriend that was from San Diego, Kendra. I was also from San Diego. And that's all I knew. That's all I knew about The Girls Next Door. I knew of Playboy through my stepdad, and you guys probably read about that in the book. But I I didn't really know much about The Girls Next Door, and I never watched an episode. So that's the answer to that. <laughs> but yeah, I really appreciate all your questions. Thank you. There are so many, so I think I need to do another podcast answering the questions. I am, I am tired. <laughs> Uh, after the book tour, I went to Hawaii. I have a farm in Hawaii. I also have a few little tiny houses on the farm that I got ready to Airbnb. So Hawaii was a little bit of work. And from Hawaii, I went to Mexico to, uh, I flew into Puerto Vallarta and then I went to Punta Mita, which I really love. And it's like on the same plane as Hawaii. So it's a similar weather. And in Punta Mita, I got to really relax. Like I went to the Auberge there and that was, I highly recommend that. And then I went to the W and, and they have a bunch of new rooms there that are just incredible. The Wow Suites. And so, yeah, I, 
I had a few days of like actual relaxation. Now I'm back in LA, just, just figuring out what's next. And I really appreciate all the support and the love. And I really also appreciate you guys tuning into this podcast and finding your voices along with me, like trying to find my voice in the world. And yeah, anyone that's been in situations that are hard or, you know, where things haven't been nurturing or in narcissistic relationships or abusive relationships or where you're a fat to people, please, or anything where it makes you sacrifice yourself. Like it's hard and it's hard to pull out of and really find who you are. And so I appreciate you being on that journey with me as I find who I am and find my voice. And I hope that you are on your journey to finding your voice and becoming more powerful and doing what makes you happy. And I think that's just really important to follow what you like and love and believe in yourself and the rest, the rest will follow. So I really appreciate all of you. I love you so much. Thanks for tuning in. Next week is going to be a really hard chapter going over chapter five, which is going up to the bedroom that very first night. There's going to be a lot of tea next week in the chapter five podcast. I needed this one as just like a little breather before we dive back into it, but Thank you. I love you. And I will see you next time.